you know, I'm always going to be 100% honest. Um, I, I always say this during uh, my consultations, like I honestly don't like need to sell you any properties. I'm like financially free through, you know, investing in real estate. And I, essentially I want, I want to get you to that point where you're financially free. Welcome to Entrepreneurial Impact this week. I'm Joe Martin, one of your co-hosts with Dave Donaldson, and I've got the pleasure this week to kick off with Joffrey out of our uh, Virginia Beach area for real estate. And I'm just really excited about his journey from military into real estate doing it at the same time and just how he creates uh, two different businesses on income and how that entrepreneurial impact within his real estate business is so impactful. So Joffrey, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us like kind of your journey and all that kind of stuff, and then really go into like your your needs to know to be successful. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate you having me, Joe. So Joffrey Whiteside, um, originally from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I left Columbus at 18 to uh, go to the Naval Academy, spent four years at the Naval Academy, uh, graduated with an engineering degree, got stationed in the Hampton Roads area, and been here ever since. Uh, my first year here, I actually uh, rented out a room um, in one of my friend's houses. So I guess that kind of got me, you know, started out on the journey of entrepreneurship. I literally cut my, uh, my cost of living into a third by doing that. And then the next year following, I actually purchased a house, which I had roommates in that house, and they literally paid my mortgage for me. So that's kind of how I, I got started. Started so, there, so, the so there is context to like cut your expenses and get creative so you can actually start profiting and really having additional income. So I got a question for you just because this is interesting. How much money were you able to save by running a room to then put it into a capital investment the next year? So I was essentially saving about, so my two roommates paid my mortgage. So I my mortgage was around $1,800 a month. So of literally saving eighteen hundred dollars a month by doing that. That's incredible. That's really incredible. So when you look at active duty, and then what what got you? Like obviously, you know, cutting expenses and buying a house and being able to get an asset. What got you? What was the moment that triggered you to say, "Hey, why don't we get my real estate license and, and make this a business?" Um, so a lot happened before that. So um, in that same property, um, I was going on deployment. And I really didn't want to leave my house back to my roommates because we just got out of college. It's kind of rowdy, you know, when I'm not there. So um, I had to think of something to do. So um, I had stayed in an Airbnb in, a, in Atlanta, Georgia, and that just got me thinking. They, you know, they charged us, I think, like $500 for the whole house for one night. So that really just got me thinking, like, hmm, can I, can I do this in the Virginia Beach area? So I did my research. I read my books. Um, I actually seeked out a lot of mentorship and watched YouTube videos and things like that. And granted, this is back in, you know, 2015 when this information wasn't, you know, readily available. You know, Airbnb and short term rentals were, you know, fairly new for this area. Um, so, um, yeah. So eventually I got everything together. Uh, I got my mom on board because I was leaving on deployment. So she was going to be my property manager uh, for that Airbnb, got everything ready to go and left on deployment, uh, essentially. And when I came back, I literally had, I think about 60K in my bank account uh, when I came back from deployment. And my deployment was like eight months long. So that was just, that just kind of turned on the light, uh, the entrepreneurial light for, for me, at least. So you literally put away just so I'm just going to double click on that one. In eight months of not even being here, you stacked 60000 into your bank account when you came back. Yep, absolutely. Had sixty k when I came back. And I, at the end of the day, I was going to be paying the mortgage anyway. That's a lot of people just go on deployment and let their house sit. And I was like, why not? I have nothing to lose. I own the house. Why not hop into short-term rentals? <laughs> That's a first for this podcast. I mean, you just like, I, I'm floored that it was that much. I mean, that's an amazing return on investment as far as short term. I got a question though, just to dig in. How much expense did you have to outlay to maintain the property because it was a short term, short term rental through Airbnb? 
Um, it, it, it wasn't much, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, this is when it, you know, first was getting started. I only had one property. So like my mom was cleaning the property. We had one other cleaner. So, um, you know, the expenses were fairly low outside of, you know, mortgage and stuff like that. But back then in this area, um, you can you could easily, you know, rent out for five hundred dollars a day. And during the summer, I was probably ninety nine percent booked. So if you do that math then uh, stuff adds up quick. Um, so the mortgage wasn't wasn't a factor um, back then. So uh, return on investments aren't as good as they are. They were back in the day, but they're, they're still pretty good. It's impressive. So. You got that rolling for you. Um, you got the passive income. What was the purpose of like getting into real estate? Was there, so there's obviously money and wealth creation and the opportunities that creates and the freedom it provides. Mm -hmm. what, what's the other driving factor of why you would, why you're passionate about continuing down that road in sales and investments? Like what's the bigger why behind it? Um, the bigger why is honestly to help others. Um, like I said before, uh, before I became a realtor, um, I discovered, you know, the, the whole Airbnb short term rental thing and actually, you know, bought uh, quite a few properties with friends. You know, I was helping friends out, say, hey, like if you want to go in this property with me, we can make roughly around like, you know, 20K in profit a year. So I did a lot of that, like actually like helping people out. Um, and financial freedom. So that's that's how it all started. That's my why to to truly like add value to people um, that that I care about. So how have you articulated that in your sales business? So when you go and like talk to me or Dave or a, a person, what's your value proposition to your client when you say this is why you need to use Joffrey to to buy or sell your home? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my value proposition is, you know, I'm always going to be 100% honest. Um, I, I always say this during um, my consultations, like I honestly don't like need to sell you any properties. I'm like financially free through, you know, investing in real estate. So don't feel like, you know, I'm going to do anything shady. Like I, I literally don't need to sell any houses and I will be fine. Like I, my family will be fine. And I, essentially, I want I want to get you to that point where you're financially free. So a lot of my clients are interested, like in investing, um, but they start with their primary residence. A lot of them, you know, are in the military, and also look into like house hack and do different things just to you know further their investment uh, portfolio. That makes sense. So what I'm hearing you say, which is really cool, is that hey, you got into real estate, good, and you're still in it because you can help people. And you've already done it. Like, I think that's the cool part about your value proposition is that, hey, I don't need to buy or sell your house. Like, this, this isn't a dollar thing that I need your commission or whatever for me to put, you know, put keep the lights on. It's really like, hey, I've already been successful in, in my military stuff. I've been successful in my real estate investments. And I'm doing this truly out of a passion to help people that have never been able to buy a home or never been able to figure out how to repurpose their primary so they actually can actually leverage it get other additional streams of income and invest more in the property. So I think that's really cool to say, hey, here's my track record. I've done all this stuff for myself. And now my bigger impact through my business is really pouring it into other people so they can have the same type of financial freedom that I've benefited from because of the on the ground knowledge and actually like doing the work that's necessary uh, for that entrepreneurial impact to show up. So kudos, man. Like that's, a, that's really cool. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I think they... They really take to that because they just like the honest and straightforward um, type of type of people, especially in the military. You want somebody to be straightforward with you and give it to you black and white. So I think uh, that's that's how I connect with a lot of my clients. I got you. So what were like mainly so there's like a takeaway. Like I'm big on I love your story. It's really uh, inspiring and in that like, Hey, you did it and you were full time and you use your leverage of time with your family and just think creatively on how like you can make some more money. And I think the, the question I got for you then is like advice wise, what were like the, what's the three things that you attribute to your success? I would say, um, honestly, reading a lot of books, um, is number one. Number two is seeking like different podcasts and uh, networking events. That's, that's a strong two. And then number three is seeking out an actual mentor. 
Um, and you have to, you kind of have to do it in that order because if you, you know, hop straight to seeking a mentor and you can't speak the language of the craft that you're looking to perfect, then it's, it's useless. So kind of have to have that baseline of knowledge to even uh, go into those other two I mentioned. So I love, there's a lot of people that don't see the value in like mentorship or coaching, like give that perspective. Why is mentorship your number three thing? Like why was that so impactful and important to you now? Yeah, so it was very impactful for me as a realtor. Um, so I initially, uh, my first year, uh, first full year, I did 43, you know, transactions. But before that, I I think I was- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me pause there. Yeah, so Joe, you're what, you're what is your the pause? <laughs> pause. <laughs> 43 transactions in your first year. Were you still in the middle, like still active? Yep. So still, still dual career uh, agent, uh, 43 transactions. Uh, so, and I, and I attest a lot of that to, you know, having, having a good mentor, uh, before that, um, I, the year before, so 2020 and my first, I think it was like five or six months, I did 16 or 17 transactions and then eventually connected with, um, uh, my mentor who is, uh, Ryan Butler. He's a part of co coalition property groups up in, um, DC area. Um, and I connected with him and he didn't, you know, he didn't tell me to do anything different. He really just poured into me like, you know, what you're doing now, just focus on expanding that instead of, you know, looking at these other avenues, really focus on becoming an expert in what is bringing you clients now. So um, I'm, I'm super grateful about that. And I even I even paid for those sessions. Right. But um uh, um, that's, 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 that's kind of a gist of like, as far as having a mentor and I, I don't pay for, you know, any sessions with him now we're, we're good friends. Um, just help them close on like a 16 unit, uh, over in ocean view in Virginia beach, uh, or in Norfolk. So, um, it's kind of providing that value to the mentor so he can actually be intrigued about, um, actually working with you. So I sent him referrals. And stuff like that so he was like hey who's this dude sending me like two or three referrals hey you need a mentor and then <laughs> we got yeah. connected. yeah ryan's one of my very close friends amazing guy and here's the key also so like i want a couple take points from this one is that one if you want to do 43 transactions go get yourself a mentor or a coach because that'll do it for you right and, and maybe it's ryan butler's the secret sauce uh, <laughs> The second part that you actually hit on that's actually really insightful about like what benefits do we bring? So like in a partnership I've been talking about is that everybody's got value, right? That we have to understand what our value is when we get into a partnership. And when you look at a mentor or coach, yeah, sometimes the value is time for money, right? But the real value in a mentorship if there's no compensation is that, hey, I'm really successful. I don't have much time, right? But if I'm brand new to the business, I'm not really like that successful because I don't have any experience, whatever but I got time. So I think there's a really, like when you look at like the value add in a relationship is that say, Hey, Joffrey, I don't know what I'm doing. You're really successful. And I know that you don't have time. I got a ton of time. So how do we make that work? And I think that's how each party benefits because you get time as the mentor, right? And the mentee actually gets the skill sets needed to better themselves and actually have an impact in your life. And I think that that's a really cool thing, man. So, so final part here is like, What'd you learn in that? So in your, your time frame of, you know, being a small business owner, what are your like <laughs> advice to those getting into it to say like, here's what I learned. I failed miserably at these three things. And this is the advice I can give you so you can avoid these mistakes. I would say the, the number one thing was uh, leverage. Um, you know, when I, when I first started doing real estate, I thought I had to like do everything myself. And, and that's definitely not the case. Um, it, you definitely want to leverage one your like systems first like automated stuff and then you want to leverage like people definitely so when i added my admin that definitely helped it, it took me from you know 17 and six months to 43 in a year once i once i actually um you know went to go get that leverage or hired that leverage 
The number one is leverage. That was just something you kind of like messed up on. You could have adopted quicker. What are some other hiccups you had that you're like, oh, learn from that mistake? Um, seeking a mentor right off the bat. I mean, it took me, you know, six months to seek Ryan out. Um, so if I would have did that from the beginning, um, I think I would have been a lot more successful in my six months. But, um, you know, going from 17 to, to 43, um, I have no complaints. So just. I would say you definitely want to learn to speak the language before you uh, get a mentor. But once you learn how to speak that language, you want to get a mentor because essentially they've done everything uh, you're thinking about doing and they could just point you in the right direction um, from the jump and you won't be, you know, flailing your arms as soon as you, you know, start uh, real estate or, or any business. It, it's amazing. It, in real estate for a while now and i see a lot of commonalities about those that have been yeah. successful and it's, it's the systems and models and tools and one of those hardest things to get people to invest in is themselves uh, to lead with revenue sometimes and hearing your your position on a mentor and saying get this done right if you're dedicated and you're driven and you're ready to move it, it's okay. Like we spend a lot of time talking about being fiscally and financially responsible and margins for business. But finding that we talk a lot about the who, but that who can be a mentor, that who can be that accountability partner. And that's what I'm hearing you say. It's like, if you, you're, and then what we're asking you saying, you're saying, do this and do this now. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's in like any, any, any type of entrepreneur, uh, you know, realm. Um, I have a cafe um, that I own in Columbus, Ohio. And, you know, before I even took that cafe over me and my brother, um, you know, we sought out mentors and, you know, we read books and, and now it's, it's pretty successful. And we even use like some systems from, uh, you know, the KW model and stuff like that and transitioned it over into uh, that sector. So it's, it's just really, uh, interesting how everything uh, comes full circle or goes forth full circle. It's the business models. They're not real estate models. And the more we talk to people, the more overlap, the more we realize that that leverage is there for them. So shout out to Dave for being a present dad for his kids' uh, hockey tournament. So if you hear the background noise, it's because he's committed as a dad that not only does he have a, a great professional life, but he's got a personal life to have those memories with him. So we can forgive you for the background noise on that, Dave. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Being there for your, for your kid. That's, that's important. Uh, I, I realize as I go on that journey with my four-year-old and two-year-old that it's not about me. I've, I've basically turned into an un, unpaid Uber task rabbit person. So that'll be fun for me. Uh, but um. <laughs> You know, I think the, the, the wrap us up, Joffrey, like bring us home on this one is that when you look at all the things your small businesses, entrepreneurial environments that you've created as businesses outside of the military, like what impact has it had for you and others, right? So if we're on entrepreneurial impact. It's about like, great, you had success, you generated money, you had metrics, all these type of things. And that money is only good for the good it can cause. So when you look at the impact that your entrepreneurial businesses have had, what is that for you? Um, for me, is really impacting uh, the people who, you know, either work for, more, for me or I'm partners with. Um, I think that's the true impact and the impact of being able to, you know, give back to, you know, communities that I, I came from, you know, my partners came from. So that's, that's the real driving factor, um, just really uh, pouring into anybody I'm associated with, I, I would like to, you know, partner up and do some type of business with, you know, everybody I have like close associations with or anybody who like worked for me until, you know, my assistant all the time that, you know, you know, one day I would like to see you, you know, start your own business and um, become a millionaire. And that's one of my goals. Like um, one of my long-term goals is literally to help you know, 15 to 30 people become, you know, millionaires. And with that, you know, they can go and help their families and help their communities. So I think that's like really important uh, to me and to be, you know, an entrepreneur. That's, that's, that's what it's all about is giving back. Joffrey, I just want to say like, that, that was awesome. You know, I think for anybody tuning in today, like to hear that story, to hear 
your bigger purpose and why is really moving to understand it's not just about the numbers and not just about like being successful in business. It really has a overarching impact to all the people in our lives and who we become as people. And then how do you pay that forward? So, you know, for this episode of entrepreneurial impact, like we couldn't have a better uh, <laughs> participant on it and really glad that we were able to tell your story and really have an impact for any one of them our listeners. So, you know, as one of the co-hosts, Joe Martin, Dave Donaldson, just want to say thank you, Joffrey, and uh, tune in next week for the next episode of Entrepreneurial Impact. Appreciate you guys having me out.